What's up, Yogi? It's Hero, and today I want to cover straddle handstands, and I really want to break this down, upper body, lower body, um, and different entry points, five different ways of getting into it. So covering the upper body, what I see the most is shoulder tightness as far as coming into a straddle handstand. If your shoulders are tight, you're going to planche a lot, and planching is just not being able to lift up your hips and not having openness in the shoulders so that your shoulders are moving way past your fingertips okay as far as the lower half of the body we're going to talk about the glutes and opening up the inner thighs and we're going to do that by really charging our toes and our legs out to the side okay you're going to need a couple blocks here i think blocks are great because they give you a little bit extra height to get your hips over your shoulders so the first thing I'm going to do is cover the upper half of the body. I'm taking my blocks out just about wider than shoulder width apart. There's no need to come into the deepest straddle that you can come into. I'm going to step onto the blocks. Be careful with this part. I've definitely slipped on a few blocks in my day. I'm going to plant my hands down, shoulder width apart, and I'm going to try and bring my shoulders over my wrists and keep them there as much as possible. Just due to physics, your shoulders are going to move forward a little bit, but you're trying to minimize that as much as possible. The way that you minimize it is by using your eyes and not letting them go past your fingers. So here is an example of a planche straddle handstand versus really pressing in, trying to keep the shoulders over the wrists as much as possible. Okay, so if you're having a hard time keeping your shoulders that far back, turn your hands out so that maybe your index fingers are pointing directly forward or even the space in between your thumbs and your index finger. What I mean is instead of being here, turning the hands out to the side here. You're going to have a little bit more space to press into the ground and find a little bit more openness into your shoulders. Okay, so that's the upper half of the body as far as shoulder tightness goes the other thing that i see as far as upper body is a lot of tension in the neck when you're trying to come up into your handstand and the reason for that that i see the most is not fully aware of what your shoulder blade is doing as far as how to elevate them which means pushing up in this direction so i'm just going to change the view blocks out to the side like this Again, just wider than shoulder width apart. Stepping onto the blocks, planting your hands down shoulder width. I'm going to rock up onto the balls of the feet, trying to keep the shoulders in line with the wrists as much as possible. And what I don't want is squeezing in of the neck. It's super uncomfortable. Instead, what you're going to go for is elevating those shoulder blades, elevating those shoulder blades trying to keep space in between the ears and the shoulders as much as possible. And this is a great exercise to start. You can rock back, rock forward, elevate, rock back, rock forward, elevate. That's also a good exercise. Next up, we're gonna get into the lower half of the body. So in your lower half of the body, you want to squeeze the outside of your butt and that's what's gonna swing your legs open into that straddle position which does take a little bit of flexibility and openness in your adductors or inner thighs. Again, I like to use blocks and a few drills around this. You can check out my Instagram. Um, I show the drills there. I'm gonna break it down a little bit more detailed. Step onto the blocks, hands down, shoulder width apart, rock forward. Coming up onto the tippy toes here, lift up one foot, set it down. Lift up one foot, squeeze the glute, set it back down. Lift up. Now, if your foot moves in like this, you're probably really tight in your inner thighs or really weak in the outer glutes. So, squeeze the outer glute, open up the inner thighs. Maybe you do both feet at the same time. And if your quads are cramping up, I have exercises around hip flexion, mobility. Try that out. Now for five different ways of getting into straddle handstand. Hopefully I have enough energy to show that to you. I'm gonna move the blocks out of the way and 
I'm gonna go after the hardest one first because I'm starting to get a little tired. Hopefully I have enough gas for that. I'm gonna come into a TT Basana and press up into a straddle handstand. The way to get into it is from your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. I'm gonna lift up one heel. Bring my shoulder behind the knee. Bring the other shoulder behind the knee. Walk my feet in together. That's gonna help engage. I'm gonna plant my hands down shoulder width apart, press into the ground. <laughs> I'm a little sweaty, straighten out the legs. Swing the legs out to the side into a straddle handstand. That's one way of getting into it. The other way of getting into it is from a crane pose or a crow with straight arms and toe tapping, pressing up into the straddle handstand. That's two. Hands down, shoulder width apart, knees into your armpits, leaning forward, coming up into your crane pose, tuck the toes, straighten out the legs, swing the legs out into a straddle. Whoop. <laughs> And back down. Okay, so and next, working my way back down, I'm gonna come from a downward facing dog and kick out into a straddle again, really firing up the outer glutes. So here, planting the hands down, downward facing dog. Look in between my hands, come up high up onto my tippy toes, bend the knees, shoulders over the wrist, kick out into a straddle. Next after that is a frog hop. Now frog hops are going to be a little bit easier because you're keeping your center of gravity tighter over your wrists, over your hands. So you're going to have a little bit more control and you're going to have a little bit more mobility in the hips as well. So starting from, I like to start from a malasana position, planting the hands down, coming up onto the balls of the feet, sort of like crow pose. We're going to rock forward, shoulders over the wrists, push the ground away, hop up into a straddle or a frog, hop up into your frog again, kick out into a straddle, the wall's right there, and back down. Now, the easiest way to, in my opinion, to get into a straddle handstand is from Proserita. And you can do this with your feet on blocks. I'm gonna show you without blocks, and here we go. Starting off from your proserita, again, not going as wide as you can go. Plant your hands down, shoulder width apart. Straighten out the arms, rock up onto the balls of the feet, lean forward, as little of a hop as you need to, to come on up. And again, squeeze the outer glutes, kick out. Squeeze the outer glutes, kick out. And then maybe eventually you can catch yourself up there Bring your hips over your shoulders, really charge up through the toes and squeeze the outer glutes. Give these a try. I am drenched in sweat. So if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Could definitely use it. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them.